Wow, greetings from Alaska. I can honestly say that it's so awesome to see the ground because we are full up with snow and I don't have to wear my snow boots. So praise the Lord for that. Um, I am so excited to be here to tell you about what God is doing in remote Bush, Alaska. Does anybody know what Bush, Alaska means? What is Bush, Alaska? Okay, we'll talk about that. I'll show you what that means. It's everything off the road system, which is just about everything in Alaska. Um, but I, I want to tell you that God is working through Arctic Mission Adventure. And Arctic Mission Adventure, or AMA, is a ministry of the Alaska Conference that is unique in the sense that while it is administered within the conference, it is 100% donor supported. And we have to do it that way because if we were to rely on our budget, we would not be able to do what we believe God is calling us to do in remote Alaska. So what is AMA? AMA is a ministry that fosters hope and healing to our Alaska Native brothers and sisters throughout Bush, Alaska. We do this through youth programs, family health, such as, and mental health programs, and community. But most importantly, we put people in place who have a ministerial um, uh, spirit that can be the hands and feet of Jesus, that can see a need, that can identify a person that needs to know Jesus, and they can put that into action. Oh, sorry about that. Big green button, thank you. So let me tell you about the work. Alaska is, is the biggest state in our United States. It is unique culturally because it is comprised of over 11 different language groups with rich tradition, rich history. These uh, folk are still tied, very much tied to the land. They still hunt, they fish, they whale. And they are very spiritual uh, people who have a great respect for each other, for the land, and for the, the tradition that they have grown up with. As you see in the, the center uh, map, you can see that the road system in Alaska is very minimal. So basically from Anchorage all the way up north is the road and everything to the left of that is b bush. So that means we have to barge, we have to fly, we have to snow machine any of our resources at, in order to conduct evangelism, uh, conduct outreach and reach people for Christ. We are in 11 villages but the potential is over 200, okay? A lot of work. It was mentioned earlier that the fields are great, but the workers are few, and this is so much the case in Alaska. In each of our villages, we try to place people who can integrate into the community and become um, a, a living witness for Christ to our Alaska brothers and sisters, our native brothers and sisters. Within each village, with the exception of two, we have a parsonage and church group, and we provide a radio station, as I say, with, within each village with, except two, that we have a local network that plays 3ABN and the Adventist message. We provide outreach, we do assessments. What other denominations are in that village? What are they doing well? Where is a need, where is a, 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 um, a niche that the Adventist church can fill when it comes to what our people need? We do, as I say, village outreach in terms of if they need clothing, we hand clothing out. If they need food, we provide food banks. If they need mental health programs, we try to put together something that will help them in their time of need. We do youth camps. Kids are our biggest um, audience. 
We try, that's our first and foremost in terms of priority. We conduct day camps, but we also try to send kids out to our resident camps because we understand that these children are living in some pretty rough environments and they are having to be the adult in their family. And so it's so important to take some of these kids out of a village. Some of them have never left a village. They've never been on a plane. They've never seen asphalt. They've never, never seen Taco Bell. Um, and here they are going to a day camp and saying, Oh, I can be a kid again. I don't have to handle these adult situations. We also provide uh, uh, opportunities. We can't do it all. We are a small conference in a large territory, so we can't possibly do everything. So we rely on mission groups that come up and can help with our building, help with our vacation Bible schools, our day camps, and so forth. So we are challenged logistically we're challenged when it comes to the resources that we need. But one of our biggest challenges is working with a people group that have been marginalized they, as a result of, of colonialism. We uh, understand that many of the adults that we are working with today have experienced um, some pretty serious trauma in their lives. And for, for the most part, uh, the Alaska Native, as is the case with any indigenous people, have had some serious events that have shaped some of the largest um, social challenges that we, we see today. And in Alaska, there are four main events that have, have worked towards this end. The first is that during the turn of the century, various denominations came into Alaska and they carved it up. Catholics went one way, Protestants another, friends another. And the missionaries did a really good job. They, they tried to, as, as is course to say, take the Indian out of the Indian. Um, and with many of these church groups came pretty serious abuses. And you have heard about uh, the boarding schools that have been uh, problematic for indigenous people, and our natives in Alaska experience those as well. And so these two events have shaped the lens through which our native people see religion, they see uh, Christ, they do not want mission missionaries to come in, they don't, we can't even call ourselves missionaries, we don't, out of respect for the fact that um, within the guise of, of church, there have been some pretty serious um, uh, abuses. And so those are two main events have shaped how we have had to model our ability and our message when we go into these villages. Many of you have heard about the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, but I'm here to tell you that there are many, many natives Alaska natives that were interned as well. They were put into um, dilapidated buildings. They were made to fish and hunt for the military, but they were starving in their own family. So again, they were um, having some, some real problems. So, and then the other thing is the high rate of adoptions, um, which is disproportionately uh, non-natives adopting natives. So those are some of the challenges that we're facing there. Um, and so how do we approach this? Our, our, our mission is to exude Christ and Christ's method when he was here on earth. He showed compassion, he took action. If there was a need to heal, he healed. If there was a need to feed, he fed. The most important part of this is that he was non-discriminatory and he was culturally aware. It didn't matter to him what these people were going through, what they looked like, if they thought something different. He put those prejudices, he put those, um, those things aside enough to touch people's hearts where they were. And he met them individually. And it was at that point that Christ could, yeah, or the individual could say, what's different about you? I wanna know more. And then that led to spiritual teaching. And then, of course, AMA's goal is to raise up spiritual leaders. So how, what does that look like in Alaska? So I'm going to take you around Alaska to a diff few different places. And we're going to start up at the north. 
and Utgiavik or Barrow. It's the most northern church in our denomination. It took us 25 years to get a church building. Praise God we have that. Our radio station went up, and they are just now coming out of their literal darkness. They're starting to see the sun again. Suicides are rampant in Alaska, but particularly in Barrow because of the isolation. So our people get together during Christmas. It's called Blue Christmas. And they, they collaborate with the community. They celebrate the lives of those that are lost. Likewise, the instance of SIDS is tremendous in Alaska and in Barrow. And so we have put together baby showers in which we provide new mothers with a baby box that gives them instruction. We partner with University of Alaska and the Utkiavik Hospital, and this gives them an opportunity to, for new mothers to learn how to safe sleep their child. Let's go to Selawik. There were two murders in Selawik in the last two weeks. It is a rough place to live. Our Bible worker has been instrumental in building up a community center that um, provides soup kitchens, kids programs. They've been involved with search and rescues and they were instrumental because of prayer that finding lost souls on the tundra. So they are finding lost souls literally and spiritually. They walk the boardwalks every week praying for that village. Let's go to Gamble. Gamble is on St. Lawrence Island. It is 35 miles from Russia. You can see Russia in that picture, village picture, in the background. There was huge fear when the Ukraine-Russian conflict came into being because of past histories of infiltration of Russian spies onto Gamble. The military, US military came in and asked the young men to bear arms to protect the, the land. Huge fear within the village. So Petu, our native leader, contacted us and said, can we do a fear workshop? God blessed us. We partnered with one of our pastors and he, they went in there. We were able to collaborate with the um, native um, behavioral health aid and some of the elders. And we were, go, we were able to go into the, to the, the schools and we talked to 75 children about fear and the heroes of the Bible and how they handled fear. We also talked to the community, and as a result of that community, this family that you see are coming to Christ. We've had 12 baptisms in this village alone, and we have 12 more that are lined up throughout our villages this spring. Amen. 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 Lastly, I'd like to tell you that God works through disaster. We don't like disasters, but they happen, but that's a window of opportunity. In our case, we had Typhoon Murbach that hit last September and it wiped out houses on the western uh, villages in, in western Alaska. Through donations, we raised $10,000 worth of um, aid to go out to the villages. We uh, worked with a brand new village and the mayor within the village of Unalakleet. We were able to provide 12 generators because the, the elders' um, subsistence food was gone and they needed electricity. The elder said, we are being blessed by so many to us unknown who support our community, but God knows. They had no idea who we were. He called me last week, their generators went down. We sent them 12 more generators and it was the first time he said, who are you? And what are you about? Going back to that slide that says you help people and they wanna know more about you. I'm thrilled because I believe that this is a window of opportunity for a, us to, to, to partner within a new village that we have never been in before. And we can share the love of Jesus through action. I ask that you will pray for Alaska. What are our needs? We need mission-minded people. We need people that love Christ, that are gonna put the, the differences of other and, and, and the stereotypes aside and serve Jesus Christ in a place that is dark, literally and spiritually. And I ask that you will continue to think about Alaska because it is our last frontier and it is truly a mission field in your backyard. Thank you.